The film opens with Bobby Vinton's Blue Moon playing over the moors of northern England, coming from the radio of a sheepherder who drops off two hitchhiking American tourists in the middle of nowhere. David and his friend Jack are beginning a three-month trip backpacking across Europe and are warned by the helpful man to keep to the road and out of the moors. The two hike until coming upon the small village of East Proctor, where they seek shelter in a pub called the Slaughtered Lamb. The local patrons make them feel unwelcome but struggle to look the outsiders directly in the eyes. Offering no food or drink apart from beer and whiskey, the barmaid's the only one who shows any civility and makes the boys cups of tea to keep them warm. They notice a pentagram etched on the wall that Jack says was used in the films as the mark of the wolfman. One of the patrons tells a joke about Americans that cracks the whole bar up, but when Jack asks about the pentagram it sends the place quiet as every head turns to stare. The dart player's offended that they made him miss his shot and orders them both out, despite the barmaid begging them not to go. He reiterates the farmer's warning to stay on the road and avoid the moors, while the funny man tells them to beware of the moon. Continuing their journey on an empty stomach, the two fail to heed the advice and stray from the road as it begins to rain. Back in the slaughtered lamb, the barmaid claims that sending them out there's no better than murder, but the other patrons are all fine with that saying that they wouldn't have believed them anyway. Suddenly a wolf howls in the distance, but the concerned barmaid's the only one who claims to have heard it and everyone else just turns a blind eye. Finding themselves standing in the middle of the fog-shrouded moors, both David and Jack hear it as well. They try to find their way back towards the slaughtered lamb but begin to hear the creature circling them and run the other way. David falls over giving Jack a brief heart attack, and when the friend goes to help him up a werewolf leaps out and begins ripping into Jack. David's survival instincts kick in and he runs as fast as his legs take him, until it occurs to him what just happened and he bravely decides to return to try help his boy. Jack's now a bloody mess, and the creature returns tackling David to the ground and leaving a scratch across his face and chest. Luckily the townspeople have had a change of heart and shoot the beast dead saving David's life. He turns and witnesses the werewolf already back in its human form before losing consciousness. Three weeks later David wakes up in a hospital bed in London with a nurse named Alex caring for him. Dr. Hirsch enters as the leading physician and looks over David who's currently dreaming about running through the forest. When he wakes Hirsch informs him that his friend Jack's dead as the result of an escaped lunatic, which is what police inspector Villiers has told him. The inspector's clumsy assistant McManus doesn't agree with him and instead agrees that it must have been a wolf, since two strong boys could have fought off that skinny attacker. Villiers claims to have reports from two eyewitnesses which means the residents of East Proctor must have lied to him. The officers leave with David maintaining the truth of a vicious wolf attack to Hirsch. He spends the next few days recovering while having the same nightmares of hunting deer naked with his bare hands. In one of his dreams he's thankfully clothed but sees himself in a hospital bed with a monstrous face. Alex takes a personal interest in David and spends a lot of time with him during his recovery, even force-feeding him when he isn't hungry and developing a close relationship. One night she's keeping him company reading a story when he dozes off and has his final nightmare. He's studying at home when his father answers the door and gets blown away by werewolves wearing Hugo Boss. They hold him down and slaughter his entire family while setting the house on fire, then slit David's throat as he wakes up in the hospital. Alex gets up to open the curtains, when she's attacked and stabbed to death by one of the dog soldiers but it's just another kooky dream. The next morning David wakes up to his breakfast being served and has a visit from his dead friend Jack. Even his ghost is torn apart and confirms what they suspected that their attacker was a werewolf. Jack's forced to wander in limbo for all eternity until the werewolf's curse is ended, which now resides with David unless he takes his own life. He warns his friend that should he not do this by the next full moon he'll change and murder someone. Alex enters and finds David cowering alone at the bedhead before he turns and suddenly kisses her. He tells her that he's a werewolf who sees ghosts probably sounding absolutely crazy, but not enough to deter her from inviting him to stay with her when he's discharged from the hospital. They get to Alex's apartment where she confesses that she's attracted to him and finds him a little bit sad. The two spend the entire day in the shower then take it back to the only bedroom by the evening. While going to the bathroom in the middle of the night David has another visit from Jack, this time even more rotten and assertive than ever, telling him to kill himself now or else he transforms during tomorrow night's full moon. Alex wakes to find David in the living room talking to himself and he warns her about tomorrow night, but she just thinks he's traumatized by his friend's recent murder. Needing to know the truth himself, Dr. Hirsch decides to go for a drive up north to East Proctor. Inside the slaughtered lamb all the same people are doing all the same things they were three weeks ago. When asking about the pentagram the barmaid says that it's 200 years old and they just never painted over it. Hirsch tries to question them about the night of the attack but they all refuse to talk, except one who leaves to catch Hirsch outside alone. He's worried about the curse spreading to others but doesn't get to say anything as he's scared off by the funny man. The next day Alex is required to go to the hospital for work, leaving a foreign stranger alone in her apartment. 
David spends the entire day walking around watching TV and being just downright bored. When the full moon rises that night, David suddenly overcome with an intense heat so he tears his clothes off. He begins to undergo a painful transformation where his limbs deform and he looks like a crippled wolfman. But true to Jack's warnings David starts to fill out and completes his transformation becoming a full-fledged werewolf. Shortly after a nearby couple are stumbling through the darkness to their apartment, when Wolf David leaps out and claims his first two victims. Then three vagrants by the river who we don't see killed but we definitely know they die by their returning spirits, before making his way into the subway. The lone person in the entire stations chase through it, until tripping over on the escalator where Dave catches up and devours his sixth. Dr. Hirsch gets back to the hospital in London and speaks to Alex about David's location, but when calling her apartment he doesn't answer. The doctor is convinced that the patrons at the slaughtered lamb and David believing that a werewolf exists is just the product of a mass hysteria. The next morning David wakes up naked in the wolves enclosure at the London Zoo. He steals some kids' balloons and a woman's coat to make his way back to Alex's apartment, where she spent all night trying to locate him around town. Hirsch calls and she informs him of David's arrival so he tells her that she needs to bring him down to the hospital immediately, as he suspects that he's the one who killed half a dozen people last night. The couple catch a taxi but during their journey the driver talks about the mutilated bodies being found. David realizes what he's done and pulls over the cab to speak with the first police officer he sees. He begs him to arrest him confessing to the murders but just confuses the man who thinks it's some kind of prank. He begins mouthing off about the British culture in the hopes of getting arrested, but he's told to just move on as the public begin to disperse. Yes he should've just punched the cop. After telling Alex that he loves her, he runs away for her own protection before the full moon can rise again. Even Villiers refuses to believe that the American could have murdered six people in such brutal fashion. But McManus promises Hirsch and Alex that he'll find David. He's currently at a payphone in Piccadilly Circus calling home, only to find his parents aren't there. He tells his younger sister to deliver a message to his parents that he loves them very much, then pulls out a knife in an attempt to do what Jax told him that he must, but he just can't bring himself to do it. He then sees his friend's ghost across the street at a cinema and goes over to find him watching a dirty movie. Jack's now completely decayed and wants David to meet some other people. The ghosts of his six victims from last night sit around the cinema reiterating the importance of ending the curse. They talk about their widows and families left behind and even begin to come up with creative ways he could off himself. Asking if a silver bullet's required, Jack tells him not to be silly and any old bullet to the brain would do the trick. As night falls and the moon rises, David begins the transformation for the second time right in front of the theater's orderly. He savages the entire cinema of people including any approaching ushers. Outside the ticket lady starts screaming for help alerting two nearby police officers. While one tries to calm the lady down his partner enters to find all of the patrons already mauled to death. He walks straight into the werewolf devouring a corpse but is able to escape while David feeds. Demanding that the other officers collect the rifles he holds the security gate closed while David begins bashing against the inside. A dozen more officers show up and help to contain the creature while Inspector Villiers walks up like he's Van Helsing. By sheer dumb luck David smashes through the gate and latches onto Villiers of all people biting his head straight off. The werewolf runs wild around Piccadilly but the panicking public cause more damage to themselves than David ever does, like some really messed up self-inflicted deaths. At the hospital Dr. Hirsch wakes Alex to tell her about the animal attack fearing that David might be involved. They take a taxi and head downtown where David's being chased into an alley by officers, who barricade the entrance and wait for a SWAT team to arrive. By the time Alex and Hirsch get there the men have David trapped and are preparing to open fire. Despite everyone's warnings Alex pushes her way through and runs down to the dead end. She tells David that she loves him which briefly calms the werewolf down, but he's unable to fight the urge to attack and is instantly shot down by officers. The SWAT team and Hirsch catch up to Alex where she witnesses the transformation back into David. With the werewolf now dead and the curse ended, Alex breaks down into tears. And the movie ends. Beware the moon, lads. You really scared me, you sh So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks. <laughs>